Goal number two is to ensure sufficient micronutrients, so vitamins and minerals. So micronutrient basics, micronutrients are needed in tiny amounts, milligrams or micrograms per day. They are necessary for body function. And there are 13 vitamins and at least 15 minerals that are essential to human health. In North America, needs are determined by the Institute of Medicine, and they set an RDA for most of these micronutrients and an AI or an acceptable intake when we have insufficient data uh, to set an RDA. So a, an AI is sort of like a best guess, really. Uh, if we look at most common micronutrient shortfalls, we can see the, the, the nutrients that more commonly fall short in plant-based diets in green and those that more commonly fall short in Western diets in red. And so you can see uh, for vitamins, uh, Western diets would, would tend to be to more commonly lack folate and vitamin C and E and K, whereas plant-based diets would more commonly lack B12 and vitamin D. And, and for minerals, uh, plant-based diets may, may more, more commonly uh, be low in calcium, uh, iodine, iron, and zinc, and, and Western diets more commonly in magnesium and potassium. So we're going to take a look at the, at the sorry, at the micronutrients that, that more commonly fall short in plant-based diets, calcium, vitamin D, iron, zinc, B12, and iodine. So first, calcium. A lot of people, the big question they ask is, but don't we need calcium for, or dairy for calcium? And the answer is absolutely not. Every mammal species produces milk for its offspring. And to me, it just defies rationality to assume that any species would require the milk of another species for its survival. It wouldn't make any sense. In pre-agricultural populations, when people had no access to the milk, of other species, they averaged about 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams of calcium per day. Um, so how much calcium do we need? Well, recommended calcium intakes vary widely around the world. Our recommended intakes in North America are actually quite high relative to what they are in, in some other countries like the UK, for example. But in North America, we recommend uh, uh, about 700 for toddlers, 1,000 for 4 to 8-year-olds, 1,300 for 9 to 18-year-olds, 1,000 for, for adults, women to age 50, men to age 70, and 1,200 uh, for women over 50 and men over 70. So how can we get enough calcium without dairy? Well, number one is to get familiar with, with calcium rich plant foods and to start to really incorporate them into your diet regularly. Uh, so low oxalate greens like, like kale and broccoli and, and bok choy and turnip greens and so forth are good choices. Uh, certainly some nuts and seeds like almonds and chia seeds and, and tahini, some legumes like black beans and great northern beans and other white beans and tofu are, are great sources and blackstrap molasses has remarkably uh, good source of, is a remarkably good source of calcium. Figs are a reasonably good source as well. And then the other thing we can do is to select calcium fortified non-dairy milks and other foods with, with added calcium. They tend to have about the milks, about 300 milligrams of calcium per cup. Tofu tends to provide about one to 300 milligrams per half cup. And so one to two servings of non-dairy milk, along with other calcium rich choices, will typically meet the RDA for both adults and children. Uh, so that, that's a really reasonable way to, bo to boost intake. We wanna be aware of factors that impact calcium absorption. So things that have a negative impact, excessive oxalates or phytates, excessive sodium, high acid load, alcohol and caffeine, and things that have a positive impact, vitamin D, younger age, Pregnancy increases our absorption and distributing the intake throughout the day can be very helpful instead of having it all at one meal. Vitamin D, uh, most people don't make enough vitamin D from sun exposure. Our ability produ to produce sufficient vitamin D depends of course on the latitude in which we live, the time of year, the time of day, the cloud cover, 
our age, our body weight, our skin color, and our skin exposure. So how much vitamin D do we need? Well, infants need about 400 IUs, people from one to 70, about uh, 600 IUs, and those over 70, about 800 IUs. And so needing needs, uh, the main dietary sources are fish, eggs, liver, and mushrooms that are grown in UV light. And of course, fortified foods like non-dairy and dairy milks and cereals. Uh, those eating only plants, especially whole plant foods only, uh, may be at increased risk just because there are fewer dietary sources. Now, I found this quite fascinating. I, I did a little uh, research to see what I could find about the amount of vitamin D in mushrooms and, and how we can increase vitamin D in the mushrooms we're eating. And, and of course, mushrooms create vitamin D when they're exposed to sunlight or UVB light. Mushrooms grown in sunlight have as much or greater vitamin D than, than um, oh, I'm sorry, mushrooms grown in sunlight have much greater vitamin D levels than, than those grown indoors. And we can actually increase the vitamin D in our mushrooms that we purchase by exposing them to sunlight uh, before we eat them. And, and essentially what we need to do is just place the, mu the, the mushrooms gills up or sliced if we want for about 10 to 15 minutes or even longer if we so desire. Um, a three and a half ounce serving of mushrooms that have been exposed to light in this way will have over 100% of the RDA for vitamin D or the amount found in about eight eggs. So that's pretty impressive. The vitamin D that, that the, the mushrooms get from being exposed will last about eight days in the refrigerator. So that's, that's really encouraging. Uh, what about supplements? Well, all um, vitamin D of 400 IUs is recommended for all infants to age two. 600 is often suggested for children. 1,000 to 2,000 IUs are commonly recommended for adults. Higher intakes may be needed, especially for seniors and for some individuals. Vitamin D3 seems to raise serum levels to a greater extent than D2 and maintains higher levels longer than D2. And plant-based D3 is pretty widely available, so it's just not an issue. Vitamin B12, plant foods do come up short on B12. They're not reliable sources unless they're fortified. Even foods commonly thought to be reliable sources like organic vegetables, seaweed, fermented foods, and mushrooms cannot be relied on as sole sources of B12. So how much do we need? Well, it's, it's about you know one to two micrograms for, for uh, children, and then uh, about two and a half to three for, for adults, get a little higher during pregnancy and lactation than uh, when, uh, for non-pregnant women. And um, vitamin B12 stores may last two to three years or more in adults, but breastfed babies born to B12 deficient mothers can develop B12 deficiency within months or even weeks of birth, in some cases resulting in irreversible brain damage. And, and uh, seniors are at higher risk. 10 to 30% of people over 50 have a diminished ability to cleave the B12 off the protein it's bound to in animal products, and therefore the Institute of Medicine recommends supplements and or fortified foods for everyone over 50, which would be the exact same sources that vegans would rely on. Uh, B12 deficiency increases the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So it's just really important that we don't mess with, with B12. Plant-based eaters and everyone over 50 needs to ensure reliable daily sources of B12 and to it's a reasonable idea to monitor your B12 status. So what are reliable sources? Well, supplements, what is recommended is 1,000 micrograms twice a week for adults, 500 to 1,000 micrograms daily for seniors. Uh, vitamin B12 foods are reliable sources and animal products for those under 50 who are not vegan. 